Tonight on America's Dumbest Criminals, what's this pup doing with pot? It's not just this dog who's about to be collared. It's a soap dispenser. It's a breathalyzer. It's law enforcement's smartest new weapon in dealing with dumb crooks. And guess who this thief is going to have to turn to for the flood of problems he's facing? These are just some of the deep problems that'll get washed ashore right here on America's Dumbest Criminals. Now, welcome your host for America's Dumbest Criminals, Daniel Butler and Betty Allen. You feel like Michael Corleone. Have fun oh, no. All right, you, you're Debbie Allen, right? Yes, Dan. We've been doing how many shows together now? No, 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 no. The Debbie Allen. Oh, well, I'm obviously not the famous choreographer, if that's what you mean, but I guess I am one of the Debbie Allens. Why do you ask? Well, because you put all that stuff on your resume. <laughs> no. No, later tonight, we have a case of mistaken identity, yeah. all right, that is absolutely idiotic. Well, there's no mistake in anything about our first pair of criminals. They walked into a bank in broad daylight with no masks and no guns. Two strikes against them right there. They were so brazen, it's amazing. But everything <laughs> catches up to you in time, and they were caught on camera and caught by the police. Take a look. We had two bank robberies here in Burlington, and these two bank robberies occurred at the same bank on Maple Avenue, at Central Carolina Bank. This guy enters the bank. Uh, he comes in like a regular customer. He waits in line, and when it's his turn to uh, conduct his bank business, he jumps the counter. He pushes one of the clerks back, and he grabs the cash from the counter, jumps back over the counter, and runs out. A couple of months later, uh, in September, at the same bank, this individual comes back to conduct some more bank uh, business, uh, illegal of course. He again jumps the counter, opens the um, cash uh, drawer, reaches in, grabs the money, jumps back over the counter and runs out the door. In both of these instances, uh, he did not uh, have a weapon, he did not have a disguise, uh, he wore the same type of clothing. He entered the bank and stood in line. Several individuals and bank employees recognized him as um, the one that uh, robbed the bank twice on Maple Avenue here in Burlington. These employees just happened to be at the branch here on Alamance Road. Everyone in the bank decided to uh, take off running. I pulled up in front of the bank. Uh, this guy comes running out the front door and I shouted to the, uh, to the individual, uh, excuse me, sir, may I speak with you a moment? The gentleman started to back up and when he did, uh, I brought my gun around to my side, and once uh, I did that, he stopped, and um, I observed him urinate on himself and asked him to get down on the ground, which time he did. It is fantastic to have some of these people, if they're gonna do something like this, to do it in this way, so my job is so much easier. daring execution in mind. He planned to whoosh down from the ceiling on a rappelling rope, steal some computer equipment, and vanish without a trace. But his whoosh got smooshed <laughs> when he cut himself breaking in. <laughs> then he made a bloody mess of it. Uh, yeah. Watch him, and you'll see why he has earned a spot in the feature we call Something to Remember Me By. Uh, basically, we had a, a, one of our local gentlemen that decided that uh, he was going to uh, break into a store. Uh, before doing this, he basically watched uh, Mission Impossible or something. He cut through a skylight. Before he actually entered the building, he even told me that he even uh, dropped a box down to make sure that the area that he was entering into wasn't even alarmed. Lowers himself in with a rope system. The store that he broke into was a uh, computer store. He was going to steal, uh, steal the computers and then hawk them on the streets. He figured it was a high uh, uh, resale value. As he lowers himself down, he gets some major cuts on his arms. He starts looking around the lower store, figures out that, well, most of the items in the store were too heavy to carry out by himself because he lowered himself. He was the only bad guy there. So after a couple minutes, he opens up one of the secondary doors inside the store, sets off an alarm, scares the bejeebies out of himself, 
he tries to climb out the store, as he's climbing out the store, he, he drops his hat, that, which is his work hat, uh, and uh, gets to the top of the, of the, uh, the roof, and there, that's where he drops his pager on the pager with his home phone number. After all his uh, hard work that he put into this crime and scheme and everything, turns out that he got away with nothing, and uh, we ended up catching him in the long run. When a drunk won't listen to reason, a very savvy police officer resorted to the surreal to convince him that he's too tanked to drive a car. She enlists the aid of an unlikely crime-fighting tool, a soap dispenser. Yes, <laughs> That's a, a soap, soap dispenser. dispenser. <laughs> Don't touch that dial. You're about to see a whole new take on the phrase, clean and sober. <laughs> Actually, what happened, this has been probably about, about 10 years ago. We had a drunk in who just yelling, banging, just would not stop. And every time you go, look, you just got six hours, go to sleep. No, I'm not, I don't want to go to sleep. I'm not drunk, give me a test. He kept yelling for a test. And there's not a test for drunk in public. And we said, look, there's no test for drunk in public. You're just spending six hours and we let you go. No, I want a test. And he banged and he yelled and it was a busy night. And it just went on and on until finally somebody said, okay, I'll give you a test. So what they did was they took over, this is a soap dispenser. And this is what we use to take, you know, for cleaning your hands. They took the soap dispenser over to the drunk tank and just put it up to the bar and says, okay, blow. And he blows and he blows and he blows. And then he goes, well, did I pass? And the person says, no, you're a point one oh. He goes, where? I don't see that. The person went, point one oh. See, he goes, okay. And so he laid down and went to sleep. <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> and never yelled the rest of the night. <laughs> In Pittsburgh, it is illegal to sleep in a refrigerator. Illegal and dangerous. You wouldn't get much sleep anyway. The ice maker would keep waking you up, huh? <laughs> what can we say? Well, while the cat's away, the mouse will play. And while the homeowners are away, the cat burglars will come to play. Or maybe just haul off all your stuff. But that's not the way these crooks saw it at all. Their stunningly stupid comeback to police questioning earned its place among America's dumbest excuses. I had responded to a burglary in progress complaint, and as I arrived in the subdivision, there was a truck coming out of the subdivision. It was a pickup truck, and it was completely loaded up to the top. And people were actually sitting on top of property, such as air conditionings and furnishing items and coffee tables strewn all over the place. So I stopped uh, the vehicle and I uh, walked up to the driver and I said, I got a simple question for you, buddy. He says, what's that, officer? And I said, do you own this stuff? He said, I'll be truthful with you. He says, uh, you're not going to believe this. But me and my friends, we were walking right past the home and we were talking about how hot it is and the air conditioning unit fell right out of the window. And we caught it, we kept it from getting damaged. And we all looked at each other and we were wondering why in the world would air conditioner just fall right out? So we went around and we noticed that no one was home. We figured they're on vacation. We said, well, someone's going to come in here and steal everything. So we went ahead and went in, got everything, and loaded it down. And then when they were going to get back, we were going to bring it all back to them. Now that's done. They never cease to amaze us, do they, Daniel? No. And it's a good thing for us because it makes for job security. It's good to be gamefully employed. And speaking of personal finances, we're about to watch someone dropping millions. No, I'm not talking about Debbie going for a weekly visit to the Pottery Barn. I'm talking about bales and bales of cocaine, which you're about to learn how to water ski. Witness what happens when the Coast Guard starts to make waves with drug traffickers. It's the fortune that never was. When the U.S. Coast Guard confiscated these 71 bales of cocaine, the total weight was 3,905 pounds. We could be talking real money. At $100 a gram, we're estimating $140 million. So how did the Coast Guard know these innocent-looking boaters were drug traffickers? Maybe because most folks don't start throwing things overboard when they see a Coast Guard helicopter. We realized, I guess, that the, uh, uh, the jig was up and they, uh, they headed south. The drug traffickers got away, but the cocaine was seized. So, what happens to the $140 million heist now? Hear it and weep, you bad guys. Because we're not going to be able to continue any kind of prosecution, I this is just to take into an incinerator and burn. 
Well, it's said that dog is man's best friend, but is the opposite also true? Is man dog's best friend? If that's the case, the pooch in this next story needs to expand his circle of companions beyond the curs in his acquaintance. Let's see what I'm talking about. Well, a while back, we were doing an interdiction uh, program, and we were out on the highway doing drug stops. We came across a car that we had pulled over, and it's occupied by two guys and a dog. The story was that uh, they're two brothers, and the, the dog is the C and I dog of the blind brother, who's the passenger. And we get him out of the car. Uh, we're talking with the driver. Just general conversation. We got to the point where we were asking him if he had uh, any weapons in the car, and he said, "No, sir, no weapons." And we got to the point where we asked him if he had any dangerous drugs in the car. No. Any no. contraband? No. No. So we looked him right in the eye and asked him if he had any marijuana in the car. Do you have any marijuana? No! Hey, man. He kind of turned a little white, pale, and then he went unconscious and slid right down to the ground, right over the bumper of the car. Well, that was an indicator to us that uh, we did have marijuana present in the car. What's going on with my friend? He just kind of... And as we did this, the brother, sensing some problem, says, uh, what's going on? What's wrong? That's good. Yes. Good yes, I'm blind said that uh, the, your brother, when asked if he had marijuana in the car, uh, passed out, but he's okay. He said, well, that's, that's good because we don't have any marijuana. We don't uh, have any use for that. We, we don't do that kind of stuff. After we got the driver revived, we asked the passenger for some identification. Let me see your driver's license. Okay. Well, he pulls out a valid driver's license, which I think is kind of strange blind man with a valid driver's license. As he does it, he knocks some change out onto the ground. And another strange thing happens, he's able to pick up two quarters and a dime off the ground. So you're blind, huh? Yes, sir. And why'd you just pick up those coins like that in the driver's license? Perception. I, I was able to hear hear them hit the ground. I've grown very attuned to that, that thing. I think the the joke was on them because we had them made for transporting narcotics and eventually found 25 kilos of marijuana stashed inside a large 50 pound bag of dog food which was for the CNI dog. I, there's, we, we're okay. I don't think there's that no uh, you're telling that. the truth. No? It's pretty dumb that they think they can pull something like that off. I think the smartest one of the three was the dog. the wrong number of a lifetime. But now, with news that you can use to vouch for your whereabouts, here's Daniel with ABC Headlines. A Drug Enforcement Administration agent in El Paso was making a last-minute inspection of the home he was selling when he found some boxes the new owner had already stashed in the closet. And what a stash it was! 415 pounds of cocaine! Well, obviously, it sort of messed up the plans for the new buyer's housewarming party, but hey, <laughs> it was illegal. To get a convenience store clerk in West Haven, Connecticut, to open the cash drawer, a robber presented a dollar bill to pay for a pack of gum. Then he grabbed $40 from the register and ran with it. But he was back a minute later to ask, did I pay for that gum? <laughs> At that moment, the police arrived, who will help him pay for the dumb as well as the gum. Now, here's a robber who didn't want to get more credit than he deserved. He robbed a store of $5,000, but the local newspaper reported the take at $7,000. Eh, now, suspicious that the manager might have pocketed that extra $2,000, he called the newspaper to set things straight. Now, while their staff kept him on the phone, police officers traced the call and arrived before he had finished his tirade. Well, that closes the file on ABC headlines. News ripped from somewhere near the back of your local newspaper. Debbie? <laughs> Some crooks go out with a bang, but this one goes out with a splash and maybe a little dog paddling too. Here's the irony drenched story of a man who's definitely in a sink or swim situation. Before he could be arrested, he had to be rescued. This customer told the car dealer he was taking the vehicle for a test drive, but actually he was just taking the car. When police cornered him in a nearby park, he did what anybody would do in winter, 
he jumped in the river. The police pulled up, saw him down here on a bicycle path with a car, and he took off running. And we recovered the car. You know, we got the car back last night. Freezing rain and rushing water not only flushed him out, but he lost most of his clothes in the process. He was stripped of his dignity, but he got a free ride home. Hopefully the next time he decides to imitate Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, he'll wait for summer. Okay, our next story is a real hot potato. When a crook tries to act cool as a cucumber, but finally spills the beans, causing a police officer to squash his plans. Well, enough vegetables. On with the video. It's the telling feature we call, I'm where? You're who? <laughs> Our narcotics detective uh, go to arrest this man for narcotics violations and when they do that he flees in his vehicle. We start chasing him, uh, chased him over in Oklahoma, I think we got up to 100, 110 mile an hour in the chase, we finally lost him. An informant calls one of our detectives and says, hey I just talked to the bad guy you guys were chasing, he told me that uh, while you were chasing him he threw his drugs out the window and he told our detective where he threw him out. When I got home later that morning, there were approximately probably eight messages on my answering machine. Jamie Hammond called me and uh, told me, you're not gonna believe this, but the guy we was, that you were chasing last night asking me about, uh, just called my house and left a message on my answering machine. And the messages were from a guy who says, he says, hey Mike, it's me. I'm out here looking for this stuff, but I can't find it. And another one, Kind of the same thing. Hey, Mike, it's me again. I'm freezing. Come out here and help me look for this stuff. One of the messages, he said, Hey, Mike, it's not cool to make fun of the police like that on your answer machine. Call me when you get home. When I recorded the greeting, I used some James Bond music, and then I said that I wasn't home. I was out chasing bad guys. So anybody who would call would, would realize that it was a, a, a policeman lived there. Surely this guy's not talking about what I don't think he's talking about. So I called the narcotics detective, let him listen. He said he's one of the guys who we're going to arrest with this other guy. On the last message, he said something about me to set the Motel 6 and we'll take care of this stuff. Apparently he thought he was talking to his buddy, telling him to come on over to the motel. He gave the room number, phone number, and everything. When he was calling the bad guy, when he thought he was calling the bad guy, he reversed one of the numbers at the end. That's why he was calling me, thinking he was calling the other guy. So if he had called anybody, except for me or, or Binion, no one would have known what he was talking about. I really love it when they call and tell me where they're at, their motel room number and their phone number, and I can just go pick them up. It makes it a lot easier. Now he's got a new number. drawn to a light, like metal drawn to magnets, like... Bugs drawn to windshields. <laughs> right. Oh, thanks so much for my dramatic introduction. Well, it seemed more appropriate, the insect <laughs> thing. So. Yeah. Whatever metaphor you prefer, here's the story of crooks who seem irresistibly drawn to police. I had an opportunity to meet a pretty dumb robbery suspect one time, one Sunday morning. Uh, myself and Officer Landrum was parked across the street, and there's a Texaco station right across the street. And while we were sitting there talking, the dispatch come out and said that there was a robbery in progress at the Texaco. And he'd be driving a black Ford Ranger, robbed it with a handgun. I said, okay. So we we like 100 yards across the street from it. And uh, we look up, and here's a black truck. He's pulling out and makes a U-turn, and we just wait till he pulls out, and we get in behind him and stop him. He, he tries to run from us, but we block him in and get him out in the rest. And uh, after it was all over, I asked him, I said, uh, next time you plan on robbing something, just look across the street and make sure there ain't no patrol car. You know, so, I love his accent. Where is yeah. he from? He's been down there with Mom and him. You know. He's <laughs> Mom and them? Down there with Mom and him come home. <laughs> well, our time is up, so I think I'll go to the restroom and make some breathalyzer. <laughs> I hope you have fun. Uh, my armored car is waiting outside. So okay. Help you. <laughs> we hope you had some fun at home, too. Count on us to be back here again next week with more things that make you go, huh? <laughs> And if you've got a lead on a story or you just can't wait till next week for more state-of-the-art stupidity, visit our website at www.dumbcrimes.com. Before we go, we'd like to take a moment to express our appreciation to the law enforcement officers, both the people you met on the show tonight and all the unsung heroes who patrol our streets each day. It's a tough job, and you do it well. 
As always, we hope that we've all learned from others' mistakes. But if you haven't, we might see you next week on America's Dumbest Criminal. <laughs> Goodbye.